All right, what is going on everyone? How are you all doing? Hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day. Today we are here with my bossing ladder of old school RuneScape or the progression of which I think people should go about bossing. Personally, I am a combat level 73 at the moment and I'm just kind of looking around at what I can do and where I can go. And I know a lot of other people may be like, you know, how should I go about bossing in old school RuneScape? What's the easiest? What's kind of in the middle? And what is the end game stuff? And how should I go about progressing? So before we get into the easiest boss I see in old school RuneScape, I will say this list comprises both regular bosses and some demi bosses that I kind of seem fit to put on the list. In addition to that, I provide a grade that is more my overall experience at that boss, how I feel about a boss. And a lot of this is subjective. Really, you shouldn't be focused on which boss is one ahead of another the overall flow of the 30 bosses is more so what you should focus on and do those bosses as you please depending on what kind of stats you have so since we have 30 bosses we'll go through them pretty quickly at least at the start here we have crazy archaeologist coming in at number 30 this is one of the dummy bosses i was talking about the main way that you're going to go about killing this boss is magic where down there in the bottom left i have requirement 60 magic 40 prayer not really too bad at all stuff i could even do on my level 73 account right now there's also safe spot available so that's kind of another thing the notable drops are a malediction ward piece and a, an odium ward piece and your gear cost is going to be five mil although a lot of these gear costs are going to be strange because you can do bosses with very very minimal gear but there's kind of a barrier of which i would recommend so five mil would be a very good route but 500k for example is the cheapest route overall i give this a boss score of 6.5 i really do think it is a good boss to get people going into it and the notable drops are actually somewhat expensive so you do get them fairly often as well, which makes it an overall good boss for a low level. Next to 29, we have the Giant Mole. The requirements for this are 70 Strength, Attack, and Defense for the Darok armor that you're going to want to use here. In addition to that, 43 Prayer for Protect Melee, and what I would personally recommend is a Falador Shield 3, uh, which requires the Falador Hard Diaries done. That makes this place so much better. I, I gave it a boss score of 4, which is kind of averaging out, because if you don't have the Falador Shield 3, it's probably like a two and if you do have it it's more of like a six so really depends on that next to 28 we have barrows this is a very easy mini game to kind of get into that will actually provide you some pretty sick rewards the barrows loot is very good and the runes that you get normally are also a decent incentive as well uh overall the requirements here is 60s and some combat stats that actually do damage and then 43 prayer to protect from everything and also if you want to do the morantania hard one day that will give you boosted runes which makes better gp an hour but that's up to you I gave this a boss score of 7 because really I, I think it's good for the combat bracket that it resides in, so highly recommend. Next at 26 and 27 I have the Chaos Bosses, this is the Chaos Elemental and the Chaos Fanatic. The notable drops, the two main ones are from the Elemental. You also get some Odium and Malediction shard pieces from the Fanatic, and both of them do drop the Chaos Ellie Pet. In the future I really won't show pets that much, but this is the easiest pet to get in the game, so it's kind of notable. The requirements, I have 75 range for blowpipe, which I think really helps these out, but you can obviously do them a little lower, uh, and then 37 prayer as well. The gear cost coming in at 5 mil for the blowpipe and a little bit of extra gear, and a boss score of 5, because it's a pretty cool pet, you can get a dragon pickaxe depending on how you do it, but overall the drops here aren't too crazy. So next up at 25, we have the King Black Dragon. The only requirement here being about 75 range. You can come with lower, but obviously it's going to be hard to kill. Now, you can do this very early on with a team if you want to, but to actually do this somewhat sustainably, I think you kind of have to be later into an account, 75, 80 range. Um, get your defense up a little bit if you can. Gear cost coming in at 1 mil. Uh, there are obviously upgrades here, I mean, but that is the bare bones requirement. The notable drops here are obviously pretty good. The Dragon Pickaxe, the Draconic Visage, and also you have a shot at the pet again i won't be including that in the future but early on it is really cool to get some early pets in the bossing realm next we have the dagonoth rex i have this split up into just the rex and then the three of them together if you know anything about dagonoths they're all in the same layer and there's three of them this one is really easy because you can safe spot it so really all you need is 60 magic and 43 prayer and the more the higher the magic the better there is a little bit of wait time in between the spawns of about a minute to a minute and a half so you will have to wait but it is something that you can get a berserker 
Spring, which is a four mil drop very early on into an account. It's a one in 128 drop, so you get it pretty frequently as well. And the gear cost here is maybe five mil. You can definitely do it for less, but I'd recommend probably a Trident. And I have this as a boss score seven because it is a boss that allows you to profit pretty consistently at a low level, which is hard to find. Next to 23, we have Jad. I know it is definitely a step up. In regards to Jad, people do this for the fire cape and partially for the pet, I guess, as well. It can also be offered as a slayer task once you start to complete it and unlock that. Uh, the requirements, I'm going to say 75 range for blowpipe. Blowpipe eases everything and probably 70 defense as well. If it's your first time, you're going to want to be kind of up there so you can take some damage. 43 prayer as well going to be a given. Now the gear cost here, maybe 10 mil the better, the less likelihood you have of dying. So really up to you. And then the boss score is, I'm going to give it an eight. I mean, I think it's a, uh, it's a fun boss your first time. It is really a good achievement to get out of the way. But after that, it's not necessarily the most exciting once you kind of have it down but still a very good boss. 22, Skatizo. Can barely see it, but the Uncut Onyx, a rare drop here that is decent. A lot of really good drops that you get on average here. I mean, everything's like 200, 300k. The requirements are an arc light, and you also need a totem per kill that you do, so that is a that is a factor. And 75 attack and strength to go along with it. The gear cost coming in at 5 to 10 mil, somewhere in there, you should be able to cock yourself a decent gear setup. And I'll give it a boss score of 7.5. If you don't have the arc light, honestly, do not bother. I would just say save them for when you do because eventually they'll have the arc light and it'll be a lot easier to do next to 21 grotesque guardians i mean they have some decent drops the uh the the core being six mil is probably the most notable and i really don't find this boss to be all worth it i mean at a high level i didn't find this boss that exciting uh drops really didn't seem worth it and it seemed like a long kill and at lower levels i'd assume this would be even more the same so while the requirements are 75 melee stats 75 range i'd recommend higher but really i just don't like this boss in general which is why i gave it a three but i do understand that some people are different you know maybe it's your type of boss but 20 we have venonatus a favorite of mine for the medium levels notable drops here you got dragon pickaxe treasonous ring and some snap dragons the 80 range is what i'm going to say is a requirement now you can do this with melee but i typically uh, safe spot it and range it which unlocks this at a lot earlier of a stage of the account the gear cost only being about 500k, not too expensive, obviously, considering you're in the wilderness. And I gave it a 7.5 because I really do think it's an enjoyable boss for med levels to be able to grind. At 19, we have Callisto, which is basically Venonatus, uh, just a lot more defense, I think. So it's a lot harder to range it. Uh, but you can also melee it. So you can either go with the melee setup, 75 attack and strength and 70 defense and use Varrock, or you can go 80 range and just go up there and test your luck. If you're, if you're doing range, I definitely recommend a little bit higher, but that's up to you. Here I gave it a boss score of six just because it's a little bit more annoying to kill. And I like luring Venonatus a lot more as well. At 18, we have Scorpia. I have this here because it has an 82 mage requirement, which I think is pretty high in regards to that. Also, you have to have agents. And I mean, the gear cost here is four mil, so not that hard to get to in regards regards to that but the notable drops here are just a couple shards like all other wilderness demi bosses and even the regular drops that you get aren't really that great especially considering you're using runes a lot at this boss so i gave it a three i really don't do a whole lot of it bandos which is one of the bigger bosses to hit the list so far the requirements being probably 80 attack and strength and 70 defense somewhere in there uh the gear cost being 10 mil plus um depending on how many people you're coming with you know some of these bosses like Bandos aren't going to be very easy to solo. I'm assuming more of a, uh, a crowd here. Maybe you're going with three or four dudes. However you go about it for a lot of these bosses that are kind of later in this, I will be assuming small teams uh, for the ones that it applies. However, notable drops, obviously Bandos, Tacits, Chestplate, and Hilt. I think the average drops here pay for your supplies pretty easily. And uh, it's definitely something I recommend for med level accounts as well. So definitely enjoy that one. Zamorak, really, I think just kind of uh, a more advanced Bandos. I mean, much the same, but it definitely deals a lot more damage i feel so trips aren't able to last as long which is why the slightly higher requirement in addition to that slightly higher gear requirements and the notable drops really here are nowhere compared to bando so i personally don't recommend it next is vedion i added this a little bit later because i think a requirement here is almost the vigor's chain mace which is 17 mil in and of itself i mean it's pretty much made for this boss the notable drops being a ring of the gods and a hundred ranar drop so it is something I enjoy. I gave it a 6.5 because I do enjoy it probably a little more than Callisto, but not as much as Venonatus. Calphite Queen taking us into the second half of the list here. Notable drops are not really <laughs> anything of note anymore. Dragon Chain Body used to be, however, no longer is. Requirements 75, attack, strength, defense, range. I mean, 
a decent bit of requirements there and I don't I don't know if I'd really recommend this boss as much for low levels it's kind of more of a higher level boss that people come back and grind but you can definitely try it out the gear cost is about 20 mil which isn't all too much and I give it a boss score of four because you know it's not really something I enjoy too much but as a slayer task you can definitely make it be uh, a bit more viable for you that is something of note is that some of these do come as a slayer task so the fact that you can do some while gaining slayer XP does actually make it a little bit more of a better task so next at 13 we have the corporal beast it's kind of, I mean, this one's really weird because, if, you know, if I was going to say we solo this boss, then it's going to be pretty late because this is hard to solo, but going as a team, you should be able to do this at somewhat of a med to high level. The m notable drops here is, I mean, mainly the Elijian is what you're looking for, but also the Arcane and the Spectral. The requirements are 85 attack and strength if you're going with a melee setup, or 80 to 85 range if you want to go with Ruby E, Bolts, and hope for uh, some high hits. That's really up to you. Gear cost here, you can definitely get in under 10 mil, and as a boss, I mean, I definitely enjoy it because it's a fun boss to do with a clan or a group of friends, and provides a high hope for an Ellie. At number 12, we may have one of the most camped bosses in Old School RuneScape, and that is Zolra. This one you kind of unlock la later in the game by necessity. I mean, you, you need 80 range and 80 mage to really be able to do Zolra pretty well, and you do need some good boss knowledge here. I mean, you, you just have to be able to pick up on what the boss is doing. It's not too hard. There are very few set cycles that it can go through and if you learn them it's not too bad the cost here being 15 mil definitely can get up there though i mean if you go for like a max setup you know you'll be looking at like two bills so really just depends on how much you want to put into it uh as far as a boss score i definitely do like it as it's one of the best gp per hour bosses that you can do early on too so 8.5 for me next up in the unlock order is crack and i mean this one's at 11 because you know you probably need 80 mage much like you do with zora but here you also need 87 slayer which you know if you're not up on your slayer and you're not training it constantly you could end up getting that pretty late into an account notable drops being a tentacle and a charged trident nothing too much of note the gear cost being a total of 10 mil and i really do enjoy the boss i think it makes for a decent slayer task and uh it's also great for splashing and afking there if you want to look up my guide on that then breaking into the top 10 we have the abyssal sire this one's actually unlocked at 85 slayer however i put it a little further in the list because you need 92 magic and you also need some good melee stats uh this one notable drops obviously some real good stuff you can get bludgeon pieces you can get an abyssal dagger or you can get you know whips or anything like that there are some troll drops but overall it is a pretty decent and boss i do like the drops that you get here and the gear cost is a little bit higher considering you have to go with a hybrid of range and melee and definitely a boss that i found to be somewhat enjoyable however probably not my favorite slayer boss now at number nine we have the dagonoth trio this one you know i think this is about where it resides you need 85 range mage melees the reason you need high levels here is because they spawn at in, in, a, in a cycle and if you can't kill them before the next one spawns you run into a lot of problems so that's why you need the higher levels almost a necessity uh, notable drops you got the berserker ring the archers ring and then if you finish the hard diaries you can also get Dagonoth bones noted so huge boost there if you can manage that overall 40 mil gear cost because you got a tribrid set up and I, I definitely do enjoy it as a uh, as a slayer training method and as a pvme method so I gave it an 8 then at number 8 we actually have Warcalf. Uh, Vorkath is a lot like Zora, however, just unlocked a little bit later in the game because it's behind Dragon Slayer 2. You also need 85 range to be able to do it somewhat efficiently, and the notable drops are a Draconic Visage and a Wyvern Visage, the second being 55 mil. Now the gear cost here is 15 mil, however, I'd highly recommend a Dragon Hunter crossbow if you can afford it, which brings you up to about 170 mil. But a boss much like Zora, I do enjoy for the grind of it, and the mechanics are actually somewhat fun to learn and not as hard as Zora either. Then next at 7, we have Sarah Doman. This, you're going to need 80 range and maybe 80 defense. I mean, really, the better the defense, the longer you can stay on these trips, but it's not needed if you are good at the boss. 70 agility as well is a big one here that kind of leaves it later into an account. I know some people rush agility, but I know a lot of people that kind of leave it, which is fair. The gear cost here being close to 15 mils, you only need a range setup. And really, with the potential of an Armadale crossbow and a Sarah Hill, I do think that this boss is pretty profitable and a decent bit of fun if you're able to get the hang of it. At number six, we have Armadale, which is one that 
that I can personally say I don't enjoy as much. However, it does offer a lot more. The rewards, the notable drops being the armadillo hilt, chain skirt, and the chest plate as well. Requirements here being 85 range, 75 defense. You're going to want to try to stay as long as you can, uh, as this KC isn't easy to get, much like Sarah Doman. The gear costs here are a little bit higher as you're opting for much more defense. And overall, I gave it a 7. Definitely profitable and also good as a slayer task, but not one I personally enjoy the most. Now next we have Raids 1 or Chambers of Zarek, where this is really going to be your first experience at like a real mini game type of boss. Here you're going to need a lot of combat skills, 85 plus I'd say in all of them. Your prayer can be a little bit lower, but you're also going to need some outside stats such as thieving and things like that. As well with that you're going to need game knowledge of all the different mechanics for Raids, which is a lot of time to kind of learn and figure out. Your cost is going to be 50 mil plus as you need a tribrid setup with a lot of other little uh, gadgets in your inventory. And here I give it a boss score of 9. It's absolutely enjoyable to try to learn and once you get in and once you get into it to do the bossing itself is even more enjoyable. Profits are great. Really a boss that I would recommend. Then next at number 4 maybe one of my favorite old school runescape bosses and that is Cerberus. The notable drops here being all the crystals that he drops and a smoldering stone as well but the primordial crystal being the main focal point at 26 mil. The gear cost is about 15 mil however I'd recommend like 70 for an Abyss of Legend, Spectral and the rest of your gear setup. Up, makes it a lot easier. You can unlock this at 91 Slayer, however if you're using Wild Pies you can do it at 86, not really something I did until like 88, 89. And then you're going to need 85 plus in your combats, at least as far as melee goes, and that really shouldn't be too hard once you get to this Slayer level. I gave it a 10 because personally I enjoy it, it's great Slayer XP, it's really good as far as profit goes, there's not anything I don't like about this boss. Next at number 3 is Smoke Devil, which is actually one of the lower rated high bosses we have here today. Uh, for one, the notable drops being the smoke battle staff at 2 mil and the occult necklace at close to 1 mil. That's one of the reasons why it's so low. In addition to that, the requirements 93 Slayer, the highest highest slayer requirement and you're going to need 85 plus combats again melee but you're going to have that once you have 93 slayer so it shouldn't be a big deal now as far as gear costs 15 mil plus would probably recommend you know 35 plus if you can do it and i gave it a boss score of four which may be generous but that's just because it's decent xp and if you're doing a poh method it is kind of fun i guess but the loot here is just awful and then at number two we have what is raids 2 uh also known as theater of blood the notable drops here some of you may know the Grazi Rapier, you have the Scythe of Vitor, and the Sanguinesti Staff. Basically, uh, the requirements here is going to be 90 plus in combats and 94 mage. I mean, you're going to want to be as high level as you can because this is absolutely end game type stuff. The lowest gear cost would probably be about 50 mil, but I definitely recommend if you can do it 500 mil plus. But you can definitely do it with less if you want to. Here, I gave it a boss score at 9. I mean, there is a decent amount of gear requirements, I do feel like, which kind of lowers it a little bit, but I feel like the bossing itself is really enjoyable. It's fun to learn and it's fun to really kind of get squads that can get going in it. The only reason I guess I didn't give it a 10 is because it's annoying that you have to do it with like four or five people most of the time, so sometimes you have to cut people, and then other times you just can't make a team. So that's really the only downside. And then finally, this is probably pretty predictable, but at number one, we have Zuck, which is the monster of which you obtain the Infernal Cape from. The Inferno is just an absolute test of your ability where you're just thrown wave after wave of monsters, much like with the Fire Cape, however, here, with much more of a price to pay upon a mistake. So to be able to do this takes just an insane amount amount of time I mean people spend months and months just trying to get down every little bit of the cave because you you only get to try it a few times you know to get to wave 55 58 that's gonna take you a couple hours and after those couple hours most of the time you're gonna make a mistake that causes you to die you gotta learn from it and then you gotta go for another two hours and spend it to learn something else it really just is a test of your patience with the game and your ability to pick up on in-game mechanics that you can find here. The Inferno really is something that people kind of get to do after Raids 2. Once people, once people have made enough money from Raids 2, they typically then go and try to do the Infernal Cape because if you want to go with an absolute max setup, you're looking at 1.5 build plus, maybe closer to 2.5. You can do it with less, however, Twisted Bow and Elijian really does aid your experience here and your ability to get it sooner. But if you want to give yourself a test or you want to prove how good you are at PVM, you can definitely try to do it a little earlier. But overall, I gave this a boss score 10 because I think that Jayek smashed it here with just 
making this such an endgame boss that I don't even think it's debatable. Maybe at some point in the future they just make a new boss for Wooks to try to beat, but as of now, this looks like it's about it. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. Any comments you have on the rankings or anything regarding what you want to see in the future, let me know in a comment down below. And finally, if you enjoy the content and want to see more, as soon as it goes live, make sure to subscribe. But with that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, bye.